All right, so um, if you cast your mind back to uh, Thursday, we were working on the wall with those big sheets of really good paper, actually. They're, they're about 10 bucks each, those sheets, so you get the money's worth. Um, and we painted those sheets with an ochre color, and we have ochre, white, and black. And with those three colors, um, you can get a huge range of warm and cool colors. But I, but I wanted to show you um, where this idea really comes from, because I can't take complete credit for it, really. Um, the, the idea of like different squares and rectangles that overlap and move in space, like they move in depth, really comes from this guy, and he's called Hans Hoffman, and, and he, uh, uh, he, he was a refugee who came to America um, during the Second World War, um, to get away from the, the Holocaust, he's Jewish, and he taught in Indiana, and he became this big name, big big painter, big well-known painter, most kind of museums will have a Hans Hoffman. But what I'm going to do is, and I don't have to, I'm going to kind of show you his work. So this picture illustrates the fact that there's a scale and you can see the size of some of his canvases. They're, they're pretty big. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that's about six or seven feet by about five feet across. So these, these are like really big things, very physical kind of paintings. And I'm going to show you a selection. Now, so all, all painting comes from drawing, which you guys do. And his sort of drawings, and this is an earlier drawing, is really charcoal on paper. And he's starting to develop this idea of, of just using rectangles and, and slowly he's trying to figure out how to form his language. He has his language. You know, every artist has a sort of visual language. And through this drawing, we're, we're getting ideas of how he started to then take those ideas into color and paint. And then he became interested in the fact that these three greens, which are all the same green, and these two blues are the same blue, occupy different spaces. So, so something I've been trying to get across to all of us is we're working on a flat surface. The canvas is really the picture plane. Whoops. And uh, I don't know what that was. And um, on that flat surface, he's trying to make things come forward towards you and other greens, in this case, to kind of go back. And I think you could probably sense that these three sort of like occupy different depths or spaces. Like he came up with this idea of pushing and pulling different squares. So like you pull a square out or you push a rectangle or square back in. Um, and I don't know why he was doing this yesterday. It does it every like five minutes. It's like somebody's listening in, you know, and they and they should be, you know. I mean, really. I mean, you know. Then I can get. Then I could be hired at Yale for a semester or something. Um, so not gonna happen. Um, so this is a. So so he's taking this idea further and further, and this is oil paint, and it's really really big canvas. But he's he's like playing with this idea of how big can I make a square, and how can I make this ochre in a different space to these colors, and, and maybe this is a background that recedes. So that's all he's thinking about, really. He's thinking on, on those sort of levels. I actually put this one in black and white from this in color, since we, we are really dealing more with black and white in a way, and drawing is. Um, but, you know, when, when you look at these, I, I hope that you can sense they move in different depths. I think, I'm hoping. Okay, let, let, I tell you what, let's do it this way. 
these two reds, which, which red is coming forward towards you? Is it the bottom right or is it the left one that tends to come forward towards you? Just, just yell it out. Which one? Which one? You think that one comes more forward? Good. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Any other thoughts on that? The bottom right. Yeah, bring your plate, bring your brush, whatever. Just stop what you're doing. Um, so, uh, yeah, and look at mine. So, the, you know, the goal, the, one of the major goals is to create the idea of, of these rectangles and squares that we know are flat because the paper's flat, but they have this illusion of pushing and pulling. You know, th this ochre has the illusion of perhaps coming forward over that very light ochre, which looks like it's on top of that ochre, and they all look like they're on top of the white underneath. But there are moments when it almost looks like this white could be coming forward as well. It's ambiguous, and, and that's kind of the, um, the mystery of it, if you like, the fun of it, is some of these keep moving in different ways. But what I, and you're doing a really nice job with the um, white, and the ochre. It's great. I, I kind of wanted to introduce you to this very gently. But now, black is a really nice thing because um, black, adding a little black to the ochre, you're going to get um, another range of color. It almost goes a green, which is rather nice. And I don't know if you can see that on the plate here, but it's starting to go a sort of a, a green. Um, and that can, and if you add white to it, it, it becomes a beautiful, warm, grey, green. And, I'm, and I've now carved out that rectangle, so I'm now going to bring that in over here. And don't worry about paint being wet. Wet on wet is not a problem. And this paint dries awfully fast anyway. Um, so, so now, you know, I'm trying to now get this to do something as well. But something I didn't really mention and something you do need to know is, is that you can, if you keep following these grids, they may not work spatially. You almost have to break out of the grids and add additional vertical and horizontal lines as well. Um, and I think you've already perhaps figured that out. But now start to add black and see the range you can get with black, white, and ochre. So you're playing with that now. Great. Can I um, have you guys come back all over, over here again? Just very, very quickly. I just want to mention a couple of things. So just bring yourself, bring your palette, whatever you've got in your hand. Make sure you can see this, all right? So, the, 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 another thing is you should be stepping back periodically from your own piece to see how it's working. Um, a couple of hints that can help is you can really change the size of some of your rectangles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like you notice here, I mean, this thing is, is big. It's really, really big compared to these smaller rectangles. So you want this variety of different scale as well. So sort of keep that in mind. Um, I, I'm actually going further down the road here with ideas. I'm actually cutting out white paper as rectangles and squares. And the reason for doing that, it's not a gimmick or anything, it's just, it's just common sense. It's like you can move your actual squares or rectangles around. And maybe this is something I'll talk about more on um, Tuesday. No. Thursday. Thursday. It's Tuesday, right? Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, Thir right. But, you know, the options of what you can do are limitless within this range of ochre, black, white, with the masking tape, with the opaque and the transparent. It, the, the range is limitless. But do use the masking tape. Do think about your edges. Um, I've noticed some people are doing a fantastic job with their edges. Um, it, it's great to have edges that are really 
kind of broken, but it's also really good to have edges that are really sharp. You want the variation of that as well, so keep that in mind. That was all, it was just a reminder, just to kind of keep you focused. right but um, I photographed some of your pieces this morning quickly this isn't yours um, and what we were doing we were making these um, rectangles on the page that were with a very limited palette of ochre black white and then you've got these greens and sort of like slate blue colors and all sorts of things and you're varying the sizes of your rectangles um, and the idea was, I mean, the goal at the very end is to try and get these rectangles to kind of shift like this. But the other goal is also to make each rectangle of some interest. So they've got some kind of, some have hard edges, others might have more broken edges. Other rectangles may have more of a pattern on the surface or a texture, like a, or a transparency, and others might be more just opaque and very, very flat. So let me just show you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I picked out pretty randomly with the camera um, where they're going. I think this was going in a really good direction. Um, I think you can see immediately that there, there's a feeling like this and this, sort of like come this way, almost like you're going back into a tunnel space going back in, into these sort of much lighter, very pale, and it seems like things are getting darker and bigger and big contrasts like black to white with hard edges. So I, I thought that is in a really, going in a really great direction. Um, then I sandwiched these two together here. Um, I thought these were also got really interesting things going on as well. And I'm just pointing these out and this helps with you when you go back to yours. Hopefully you'll start seeing things that are good in your own piece and, and things that are not resolved yet, of course. Really like what's going on here and there. Like how, how we know that is one rectangle and we know this is a square, but they're exactly the same color and yet this one sort of slightly comes forward because it's overlapping the square. But I really like this pale kind of slate grey blue next to the warm green and that incredibly hard edge against it. So I, I thought those three were really super, really super. And there's lots of other great things going on in this piece as well. Um, just to note like using masking tape you get that really precise edge, really, really beautiful. But it's really great to have an edge that is like a really broken edge. So, so think about edges a lot as you go through that, through this piece. I like the idea of this one having very long rectangles that are vertical. It's like a rhythm that goes through the piece over and over and over. And I thought that was a nice theme or thinking, especially here where you get that and then you get that and then you get that. I thought there's something really nice going on there. It's like the white is over the black or maybe the black is sandwiching the white. It's hard to tell. And I think that's a lovely sort of like ambiguous thing going on. You, you know what you can do um, um, is take you know, you can take paper and you can paint on the paper, on the floor like this, okay? Um, and then you can cut from the paper, you know, rectangles or squares, you know? And you're gonna find, in some ways, it's quite rewarding to do that because, I'm just gonna pull out a big rectangle, all right? Because you can then play with it, you know? I've got a bit of white paint on it, doesn't matter. But then you take that, 
you know, and then you'd start to go, okay, where should I put it? It's like a collage, you know, and you're starting to figure out where it could go, and then you could take pins and pin it to where you think it would go. Let's just say it's going to go there. I, I don't know if it's any good there or not. You know, and then you pin it, and then you look at it, and you go, yeah, that's good, and then you take your glue, and you glue it. Boom! You know? That was all. Just feel, you know, feel free to do that. Give yourself the permission to do that. You know, it's, it's a lot of this is experimental. It's not, you know, preconceived too much. Excellent. Excellent. Hey. Let's pin that on. Get the glue. You're at the point where you, you could just. Um, the ground color is becoming shape as well. So like, I guess if I, if something went, you know, there, then that's a shape, and you don't have to paint it. Or if, if something was here, um, that's a square, and this becomes one. So, so you're kind of like blocking off areas to allow the ground to be a shape. Yeah. And in, in a way, you've, you've done it there, which is really beautiful. Um, and then that becomes. <laughs> so you're you're kind of close to closing down. I think you really are. I should have this one because <laughs> this captures my eye and I walk by. It was a beautiful surface, and, and that's a beautiful surface as well. It's just um, it's like transparency. It's like it was like clouds to the sky. So it becomes. Tangible to the real world. Hey, this is that uh, yeah. I'm walking around with this now. Like, this becomes a show. It's almost like a lot of it's already done for me, just by blocking off areas. If I put that there, that is proposition. A lot of times you look on your layer. But remember, the ground color underneath makes red
<laughs> it's like we're trying to break these um, rules that we seem to have about what one can and can't do in art, and it's like can do anything. Yeah, I think I think you probably do. Maybe you're, you're trying to get the darker ones done first, kind of moving up to the light. So like the lighter ones come on, darker ones stay back. Good. That's that's a good thinking. And and the other thing is, I mean, simply bigger squares or rectangles lower down tend to come more forward because they're heavier. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's all good stuff. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's sort of taking you on a voyage, you know, without lifeboats here. But that's what art is. That catches my eye when I was talking to Joe, I looked across and I go, maybe when they're wet, they have more luster, don't they? And then they kind of dull a bit when they dry. This is a really powerful area. Can we come in here? Yeah, you're really close. I look at, I, I see that as a potential, this could be a potential shape. And then, it would make that into a shape. Okay. Yeah, so it's like we're breaking up the ground color all the time into shapes. And I, and I think some of us are seeing that. The ochre underneath is the ground color, and you're trying to break that up as well, so if they become rectangles underneath what you're painting on top. Now we're getting there. It takes it takes like two class sessions to get something that is reasonable, you know. And, and you realize you can paint over things and change things and revise things. It's like writing a paper, making revisions. See, now you can all take a painting class, so you all know it. Huh? <laughs> 